Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Kathy Hart and we are going to have a really fun uh, presentation today where we are all going to learn how to make wonderful chocolate truffles using a truffle mold. Before I get into the actual presentation, I just want to show you what I've used. So this is one of the molds that I've used. And you can see it just has a design that'll become evident why I'm pointing out that design to you later. Here's a slightly different one. It's a little bit smaller, doesn't hold quite as much, but it too has, it has a unique design on top. That helps me identify the kinds of truffles that I'm making. And then this is one I use that, that I put peanut butter in because it looks like little peanut butter cups. But there's just a couple of the, um, the molds that I use. I want to go ahead and start sharing. It's a huge file, so I have to do it as a PDF today. But like I said, we're going to learn how to make chocolate truffles. This won't be a live demo because I need to show things up close. And it's very simple. We're going to go through the steps. If you want to, there are lots and lots of uh, YouTube videos that show how to make it. But truly, it's very, very simple process. So today, the group that's hosting, it's two organizations, Friendship Force of Sacramento, where we explore, understand, and serve. Our group is dedicated to cross-cultural understanding, and our members travel and host others in the name of global friendship and peace. This is our local website. We are a global organization. We have over 300 clubs around the, um, around the world. The second group that is um, hosting today is called the Renaissance Society at one of our local universities, California State University, Sacramento. That's where a, a good part of us are, are located in the Sacramento area. And, and Renaissance, we learn, share, and connect. Renaissance provides opportunities for participatory lifelong learning and community engagement for adults. Both of these organizations are fabulous, and we are doing these presentations as one way to share about our wonderful organizations with the greater community and in hopes that you might become interested in learning more about those organizations, but it's also an aspect of service. We are giving back to our communities, especially during this time of the pandemic. So quick etiquette, I'm sure you've all been on Zooms, but um, we are going to have you mute yourself to minimize the background noise. You can either, because there's only, um, I'm not sure how many we have right now, but it's a small enough group that if you wanted to ask a question, you can either unmute to ask the question or use chat. Mary Ellen is um, our technical host today. She's a member of both groups as well. Thank you, Mary Ellen, for joining us and helping me. It's hard to do all of it when you're presenting, but she'll be she'll be watching the chat if they're you know if you if you submit a question she'll interrupt me no problem and then I'll, i'm happy to answer questions um, continuing on with our etiquette we just ask that you be kind and respectful to everyone remember this is fun and that your instructor who is me today is volunteering their time to present this virtual event now I did send out a list of supplies and the recipe with the instructions earlier today, but we've had evidently some kind of a glitch. So I am planning to send after this presentation, um, I'm going to send the recipe with the uh, directions and it'll also list your supplies. And I'm going to send a link because we're recording this session and I will send you a link to the YouTube page that will show everyone, not just uh, the people who participated, but anybody who registered how to um, view the, you know, a link to the recording. So you basically, for supplies, you want chocolate for your shell and ganache. Now I'm, I'm separating that for a reason because you may in fact use different chocolates and that's fine. And you can use melts. 
you want a heavy whipping cream, either a plastic or a silicone chocolate mold. I've seen them, um, both of those be used. I use the plastic ones, but I've seen uh, YouTube videos where they're using the silicone. Where can you get it? Pretty much anywhere. You can get it at a craft store, Hi. cake decorating supply. Hi, Steve. Can you mute, please? Thank you. Um, a craft store, cake decorating, supply store, or you can buy them online. You'll need a double boiler or a microwave. I personally do it stovetop. I just feel like a double boiler is, or even a pot of water with a bowl inside, which is really a double boiler. I have more control that way. And then anything optional that you might want to add, nuts, fruits, cherries, other dried fruits, flavorings, um, any, anything like that. But you need, this is what's required, you're going to need those molds of some kind because I'm teaching you how to make it with a mold. You can certainly make chocolate truffles and roll them by hand. It is a different look. It's very nice. I don't think it has the same wow as uh, chocolate truffles made in a mold, but they are certainly delicious. So you want the heavy whipping cream, the chocolate, and the molds. That's required. You don't really need anything else. So what kinds of chocolate? I use guitar chocolate melts. When I make these, um, I, I buy my melts from Winco. I, you can get them online. I've listed the uh, guitar website there. That's just a brand. Winco doesn't sell the highest quality. You can get a, a much higher quality if you go to the Guitard web, website. But honestly, for my purposes, I'm usually taking it or giving it as gifts as um, at Christmas or a holiday of some kind. And I've never had anyone say, wow, I, I just really wish this had better chocolate. I've never had anyone say that. People are delighted to get it. They seem to enjoy it. So to me, using the melts is, uh, makes it more affordable because they are less expensive. But if that's important to you, um, if you want to use a finer chocolate, I recommend using it for the ganache fill, filling. If you think about it, your shell is just a tiny little coating. So if you're going to splurge, splurge on a finer chocolate, for your ganache, the inside of your, of your truffle. Now, I'm not going to go through this step by step. Like I said, I will be sending this out um, after the, after the uh, live Zoom with a link to the recording. But your ingredients are basically, your, for the ganache, it's your chocolate and your whipping cream. Now, we're in the US, so I did pounds and cups. I'm sorry, I know, I, I just don't know the conversion, but I know you guys know how to do it. We have trouble with that, but everyone else in the known universe can do it. Um, so you can melt the chocolate in a microwave. I would do it definitely if you're gonna go in the microwave, start at a very low power, start for a very low number of seconds, stir and repeat. I don't like that method personally because I feel like I just don't have control over it. But if I'm doing it on stovetop, I have complete control because I can see it as I'm stirring. So this is the yield is about a cup. And so you can get about 16 of those two inch truffles. And then I just list a couple of the possible flavor additions you might be interested in adding. So I'm gonna go through the directions very quickly and then I'm going to show you step by step because it looks like a lot of steps, but it's not. So you make that ganache and then you set that aside. You're gonna make sure your molds are clean by wiping it with a napkin or a cloth. Now I melt the chocolate in, and I'm gonna show you a photo of this with a, a pot of water and a bowl of chocolate, those, those chocolate melts that completely covers the, the um, top of the 
of the pot because what you do not want is water or steam coming into your chocolate. I do it stove top. Once it's melted, you're going to use a small spoon to coat the mold. Some people use a, I've seen it where they use a, um, a paintbrush. I've never tried a paintbrush. I've also seen where people dump in the chocolate and fill it completely and then turn it over and pour it all out and there's just a little bit left. That, that method, actually the professionals use that mess, method. It is incredibly messy in a small, you know, in a, in a normal, not a commercial kitchen. But what, however you do it, you wanna work quickly because the coating does begin to set up. So then you pop it in the fridge, bring it back out, add your ganache, any fruits, you know, just to the, you leave a little bit of space at the top, pop it back in the fridge, bring it out after about 10 minutes, add that final little bit of chocolate layer on the top, let it set up, flip it over, and basically if there's anything you need to kind of clean up, you clean it up, and if you want, you can put it in a paper cup and you've got a gift. So let's look at that a little bit more in detail. Here's making a ganache. It's just those two things, your whipping cream and your chocolate. Either melt it in the microwave or stovetop, whichever you prefer. And then you're gonna set that aside because now you're gonna make your, tr your um, truffle shell. So your ganache is all ready. Your ganache is much softer and will not harden like your shell will. So here's your shell just tells you put it in the microwave or using a double boiler, but it is very important that you do not get any of the water into your chocolate because what it will do is it'll seize, it'll ruin the entire batch of chocolate. You cannot fix it if, if water gets um, into your, your chocolate. So you're going to have every, you're going to have your molds all ready to go. You've got melted chocolate for your shell and your ganache is ready. So this is how I make the shell. I do it stovetop. Notice that the bowl completely covers my pot. That's because I don't, and I'm, I've got the water. The water's simmering. So there's some steam coming up, but it is not a rolling boil. You just have it warm. And so if you're stirring it, that will, in a very short order, it's going to melt your chocolate. And this way, I'm not going to have any problems with the water coming into my, um, my melted chocolate. And so you're just gonna stir until it's smooth and creamy. And then I take it off of the pot. Now here I am, this happens to be a small demi -tasse spoon but you don't need to use a demi -tasse spoon. This happens to, these molds are a little bit smaller. Um, like I said, you could use a paintbrush or a regular spoon, but you wanna work quickly and you just wanna go around each of the um, little, little molds. And you wanna make sure that the entire inside of the mold has some chocolate. Doesn't need to be a lot of chocolate. So I'll put a little spoonful in and then I'll just take, as you can see, the edge of the spoon and kind of wipe it around um, that mold, trying to work quickly because it does set up. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's set up and I'm done with that shell. I just want to try to get them done quickly so I can get them in the fridge. And um, I don't, don't worry about being meticulous at this point. You can see I've got some chocolate dripped over here. That, none of that matters got a little bit over the edge, doesn't matter. All of, none of that will be in your final truffle. So once you've filled all spots, you put it into the fridge for about five minutes to set up. And now you, in this particular- Kathy, truffle, we, we did have one question. Yes. How many truffles are you making at a time? Uh, I, 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 it said earlier, I think, I think it makes about, uh, I'd have to look at it, but I think it was about 16. And then I talk at the end about what to do if you have leftovers. And I'm gonna show you how many I made doing two batches 
of the recipe because it's a lot. I mean, these truffles are rich, but I will show you uh, to give you a visual of how many you're gonna get. So in this, I think I made, these were the truffles I made at Christmas and I had a milk chocolate shell and I had a dark chocolate ganache. So you can, uh, you can see a little bit of that milk chocolate. It's lighter. So you're, once the, you've taken the shell that's been in the fridge for a couple of minutes, you're gonna add your ganache. But notice, I don't go to the top. I hope you can see this. I'm leaving a really small little bit at the top um, because that will be the bottom of your truffle and you don't want it rounded, you want it flat. So I, I add my ganache, if there's gonna be nuts in there, that's when you're adding it or a cherry or any other dried fruit, but just don't fill it to the tippity top of the mold. So when I've added my ganache now, that again, just takes a few minutes, pop it back in the fridge. You literally are waiting for things to harden. That's the longest time in your, um, for your, the whole process here. Now bring it back out if you, after it's had the ganache in there in the fridge for about 10 minutes and you're going to add the shell bottom. So you can see in these molds that it was a dark chocolate ganache and they're putting a milk chocolate on top. Now you really don't want it any higher than your mold. And the reason for that is it, it will, it, it's, it's just, it's a superficial, not really, it has nothing to do with how it tastes. It just won't be flat. So these are a little bit high. Um, this is actually something I got off the internet, but, um, but the idea is to just go flush with your mold and then put it back in your fridge. Should be very, very simple to, to pop right out of your mold, regardless of using silicone or the plastic. It should, they should come out very easily. So you're just gonna flip it over. Um, you know, I've had to kind of press a little bit on a mold just to get it to release, but it, it never takes more than, you know, just a, a tiny little push by my thumb or something. Now you can see this particular truffle here at the bottom on the um, really kind of right in the middle of the side has some extra chocolate that happens. This has a little bit of extra chocolate too up here more on the left side, um, more towards the top. That's no worries. You can either cut it or just kind of break off if there's an extra piece that might be distracting from your, um, from your truffle. A shine is highly desirable. That is what you want with a finished truffle. So you kind of clean it up. And then if you want, you can put it in a paper cup. This is not a, um, a cupcake. This is a candy paper cup. Again, you can buy those online. You can get them at craft stores. You can get them at cake decorating supply. Um, stores, multiple places, but this really makes it look very, very professional. You do not have to do it. People are delighted when you give them, you know, a small little uh, plate with maybe three or four truffles. They're wonderful. It just really does give a beautiful finishing presentation. Well, what other kinds of things have I done in uh, adding fillings. Caramel's great. I put caramel inside with the ganache. The ones on the bottom left and bottom right, it, you can see I'm working. I've got my shell already in place. I'm adding some ganache. And I usually have to cut a caramel because I don't have really large um, molds for these for this particular size, but I like using the square ones for caramel. That's just really easy to identify as, okay, that's the one that's a caramel truffle. So I've, I've done this. People really enjoy a caramel filling, but I'll be honest with you, my family favorite is using white chocolate shell, 
with um, maraschino cherry and nuts in the ganache. We love this one. It is, it's just our favorite. Well, what do you do with if you're if you have something left over, especially if it's not even, you know, you might have two molds, but you end up with, um, you know, more melted chocolate because you can continue to add. That's something I didn't have on the presentation. If you're you can always add more to your shell, you know, if you need more. But if you end up with more, you know, now you have to do something with it but the the shell is super easy to use as leftovers so um i've made some real basic ones where i didn't quite have enough to do a a, a whole truffle so i did kind of i have a little one that almost looks like a basket so i just did open truffles and so they had the shell around it and then i did the ganache with um cherries and nuts on top so it was like an open uh truffle or open candy you can, if you end up with extra ganache, you can just cool it in the fridge, roll it in a ball with your hands, and then either roll it in chopped nuts, cocoa or cocoa powder if you've run out of melted chocolate for your shell. If you, again, have extra melted chocolate, you can dip, you know, larger marshmallows, not the little ones. Cookies, Oreos are great dipped. Um, or just other kinds of cookies, you can just dip half the cookie and either you know, put a sprinkle on the top or, or you know, anything on the top that you might, that your family might enjoy. Okay, so here's an example of how I use the different molds to identify what kind of truffles. So the one on the left is my caramel. The chocolate ganache has no nuts is in the middle. The one that kind of has that little flip of chocolate on the top, which is in the mold, that one has the chocolate ganache, but it has walnuts. So again, it's very easy when I'm giving these to identify for people, they know, oh, that's the nuts. This one doesn't have nuts. Oh, those are my, those are the caramel. So I did two batches of the recipe that if you, you know, I'll be sending back out an email. Um, this is what my yield was. So you can see I made a big plate of the white, um, the white ones with uh, maraschino cherries inside and nuts. That's our favorite. Right down here with uh, the with the caramel, those are the open ones I was telling you about. I had some leftover ganache, but not a whole lot of leftover chocolate. So I just did an open truffle, but you can see they're very, very attractive. It's just a different look. And then I did quite a few that were um, the dark chocolate with, with nuts inside. So a two yield batch will give you truly plenty, plenty, plenty of truffles to share. Here's a candy mold. This is actually a silicone one. And you can see all around there's like little tiny bits of chocolate and whatnot. So that's fine. They're easy to clean. You're just going to use warm soapy water. It is important to let them completely dry before putting them away and try to store them flat. So you don't end up with a, a bump in there. Okay, so now that is, that's the end of my presentation, but I am happy to answer questions. I'm gonna show some of, um, I, I, I think we had a couple of people join since I showed the molds that I use. So here is, can you see me, Mary Ellen? I sure can. Okay. You might need to uh, uh, lift it up just a little bit. Yes. And then we'll ask people if they'd like to raise their hand using the reactions. They can do that and you can ask your question yourself. Okay, perfect. I'll unmute you. So here's one of the molds. This is the one I did the white chocolate. And this is, um, it's about an inch by maybe an inch and a half 
Here's a slightly smaller one. I actually have molds that are like two inches high. That's too big. That is just too much chocolate. <laughs> it is a yummy topic. Topic. Thanks, Helly. And Marty had a question. Oh, Marty, it, I, it's not really a question so much as I I've heard and I use silicone molds for muffins all the time that never use detergent with silicone because okay. it will pick up the taste over time. Okay, thank you. I, I don't use silicone, so thank you for that. All right, we have another question from uh, Kathleen Green. Sometimes the chocolate gets a whitish film on top. How do you fix that? That is, oh, they call it a bloom. And I don't believe, and Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen is a, is a food expert and a, an amazing cook. She had her own catering business for years. Um, I don't believe you can fix it once it's bloomed, right, Mary Ellen? No, it's, it's it, it, isn't that horrible? What I do is I paint over it. Oh, there you go. So if you've got a bloom, you just take a paintbrush, literally go back into your chocolate and paint over it. It won't be quite that smooth look that you've got, but um, it'll make it look a lot appetizing. And by the way, that it happens if you put stuff in the refrigerator, it, it's not going to alter the taste. Right. And I, I've done some reading about um, why the blooms happen. And they're talking about when you're when you don't use a compound chocolate like the melts, you have to temper the chocolate. Right. So that's getting it to a particular temperature. And so, it, you know, you, you let it all melt and then you have to put more chocolate in to kind of cool it all down. I'll be honest with you. That is too much work for me, for me. <laughs> But if you are, if you truly have a passion about that, I would just recommend maybe Googling tempering chocolate and you can see some great YouTube videos that I think would help with that. Um, but when I got into that, I said, you know what, I, that's going to make you guys say I'm never doing it. It's too complicated. Literally from start to finish, it's about an hour, but the majority of your time, it's it, it's just setting up in the fridge. And if your house is cool, you might not even need to set it up in the fridge, but certainly it gets very hot here in the summer, you would want to put it in the fridge. So I will tell you, there's a shortcut to tempering. Oh, okay. That is, uh, you, it, it's harder when you're using the double boiler, but if you use half speed and you actually do it in the microwave at half, and then you stir in between, and you do that about two or three times, you can temper in three to five minutes. Okay, good. I, I heard uh, someone said just water, but I'm not sure what that means. I'm not sure either. Let me ask another question. It's a back and forth about how do you wash the silicone, I think. Okay, so that was the right silicone. Now. Okay, yeah. thank you. So Dean wants to know how long will the truffle filled chocolate last? You know what? That has never been an issue um because it always gets eaten and i share it so i think i may have had it oh you know i maybe a week or so but it i just i give it away or we've eaten it so i don't do it for a long i, mean, I don't do it thinking for the next four months this is going to be my chocolate truffles um I usually do it around a holiday. It's a special thing. So I give it in connection with the holiday. Great. And then we have the question, how do you store it? And then can you use chocolate chips for making truffles? One question, two questions, one person. Okay. I store mine because it's got the heavy whipping cream in the fridge covered. Um, and I don't like using chocolate chips. Now that's just a preference because I've, I've done it in the past for the ganache. I just don't have great luck with it. I don't think it, I don't think it gets a really smooth consistency. Um, but you know, if that's what you have, I would give it a try. I would probably do a smaller batch to see, you know, try it maybe a half batch and see how it works. All right, and Kathy, I'm, I'm sorry for adding things, but no. to make them, <laughs> that was one of my specialties. Uh, chocolate truffles, even with that heavy cream, will store for four to five months. Huh. 
the problem is you need to keep it covered because it will pick up if it's in the refrigerator it'll pick up the right. taste of other stuff that surrounds it well that's good to know now i don't need to rush through and eat several no it's <laughs> wonderful you can do them as a christmas party with some liqueur and you're, and you're going to be great oh, uh, and then somebody <laughs> was what do you use to wash the silicon bakeware Someone so i think it's just water, water. I think Marty, it would just be hot water or warm water. No, in for the silicone, yeah, yeah, she said yeah. no detergent. Yeah, it it picks up the taste after a while. And I I have muffin cups, and some before I learned that, um, I can tell. You know, when okay. I I've got a batch of six and a batch of twelve, and when I use all eighteen of them, I can tell. Oh, so it, eventually it would, and then you're baked good will pick up and, and maybe it's more baking but still i wouldn't want to do it with no. anything else yeah 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 that's good to know and then somebody mentioned there's also an edible luster dust you can paint on it it mm -hmm. makes it look very elegant right so michelle um mary ellen says it lasts what did you say four to six months four to, four to five months Four to five months. What liqueur do you use? I, I don't. I've never done one with liqueur. I love it with Grand Marnier oh. and something called Mandarin Napoleon, Cherry Kirsch, mm. um, Papa Maraschino Cherry in in the mold when you're using the mold ones. It's a wonderful way of doing chocolate covered cherries too. So something that is, but you can use almost any. You don't want to. Uh, that's the problem. You want to be very careful on that alcohol. More than two tablespoons and your chocolate seizes. It literally hardens too quickly because yeah. it takes all the moisture out. Uh, and the question, and you don't actually have to keep those truffles. I keep, uh, I almost brought some. I, I keep old, you know, like I buy candies, seeds, whatever, and I'll put them in the box and keep them outside, but you can't have them in high heat. Right. So that becomes a problem. Uh, somebody said, uh, so that's kind of how long do you keep it um, in the, uh, is that two tablespoons of liquor for the amount of chocolate in this recipe? Um, I don't use liqueur, so I probably wouldn't even put that much in. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to ask the other question. If you want the taste, you don't necessarily have to use liqueur. Could you use other um, extracts? extracts? Yes, they do talk about um, using alcohol, I think, I believe it's alcohol-based extracts versus, um, water-based. So, you know, I would just be very careful, very careful, because you don't want to, but I've had like maraschino cherry juice get in with my, um, with my, uh, ganache, and it's fine, but now I'm just like really aware of it. And I don't, you know, I drain my maraschino cherries because I just want a, a cherry in with my candy because that's how my family likes it. I just want to say I posted again the link in our chat and I'll include this in our, um, in, the, in the email with the link to the recording. But that is a link to lots of other virtual events that are being hosted by Renaissance Society of Sacramento and Friendship Force of Sacramento, all free, all open to the community. And we have somebody else again that says, I was checking the website for a uh, guitar. Can you order bigger amount of chocolate in order to buy it for less money? I believe they they wholesale, I think. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they do. And if if they don't, which I seem to recall that they were in much greater quantities than I would ever buy. Um, so the, it's Michelle, the the recipe is the same, whether you're using white, dark milk, it doesn't matter whatever chocolate or melt you're using. It's the same um, measurement, how many, you know, how much whipping cream you use to the chocolate so you can you can use white chocolate dark chocolate milk chocolate or a combination like i did i did you know oh. i've done a white chocolate shell and a dark chocolate um, cho uh, um ganache good and then somebody said um oh this is for 
since I can't stand the melted chocolate smell, I will welcome all gifts. The white <laughs> chocolate is an actual chocolate. So I'm gonna ask Verna if she has the same problem with white chocolate. And then Victoria says, Wilton makes an edible gold spray available at Michael's. Oh, nice, that sounds fun. So that sounds good. And we do have people, I did uh, uh, put in the chat that uh, generally what we call our whipping cream would be double cream if you are in the UK. Oh, thanks. And in um, India, there are different brands, but they're very different. So I'm gonna ask you this question. You're using a dairy cream. Can you use anything non-dairy to create a truffle or does it just totally alter the taste? You're asking me that? Yeah. I have not tried it. I had that question before. Someone emailed me. And again, I've not tried it, but there are alternatives out there. And I, I would say try it, but try it with a half batch recipe, just so if it doesn't work, you know. And again, you can still use the ganache in another way. You can add it to something, add it to a brownie recipe. You know, it, it just might not be. I, I mean, I don't know, Mary Ellen, have you ever done a non dairy? Um, no, but I'm really tempted now because I do have friends that are vegan and I thought, right, it'd be interesting. To, it would be a totally different taste, though. Obviously. Yeah. Uh, we talked about where we could get molds because uh, they're easily, you just go on to, you know, your search engine, you'll be able to find them. Joanne's here, Michael's has them, uh, the Amazon UK, I just, all of, all of that. I will um, ask you a question, but I'll tell everyone where I buy my molds is at thrift stores and garage sales because people mm -hmm. buy them and then they never use them. And I've never paid more than 50 cents for them. But how much do your molds cost? I buy them at the same place. The okay. first time I bought them new, um, when I learned how to make it at an event, and I said, oh my gosh, these are really fun and they look so spectacular. And then I just, because I enjoy the hunt of garage sales and, and thrift stores. So I have picked them up over the years at both places. Now, someone asked if you could make ganache using water instead of cream. I don't believe you can. Well, Dee says uh, you can. You can. Okay. Well, I've never done it. Yeah. She says you can make a vegan ganache by using water instead of cream. You can use wine. It, it, I, yeah. It does. I guess it would just be. I don't know. I, I don't know what would make that chocolate smooth with just right. water. Right. But again, I have not done it. So. Um, and Dee might, might tell you, my sense is you'd have to do some whipping you know, to get some air into the chocolate, Indeed. but I could be wrong. Cynthia Lee says, I use the non-dairy whipping cream and it's delicious. Oh, great. Excellent. Thank you. There you go. So there is, yeah, I knew there were non-dairy creams out there. Excellent. Well, I put again our, uh, a list of upcoming events and we've got some just really, really wonderful things coming up soon. Some are food related, some are art, there might be history in there you know, all kinds of, of really, really fun events. Again, this is one way our, both of our organizations enjoys giving back to our community during the pandemic, during this time where it is not normal. And we are trying to just help people connect in a special way and hopefully in, enjoy learning about something new. So thank you everyone for,